This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X280. Now, we've been reviewing the X series, the X200, the X210, you get the idea, all the way to the X270, which is the previous generation model for years. And this is a redesign from the 2017 and previous models, which is a welcome thing because maybe the design was getting a little long in the tooth. It's still that 12 and a half inch, no nonsense business ThinkPad that is more portable yet still very durable than most laptops that are available on the market. But it's changed a lot. Now it's sort of like ThinkPad X1 Carbon, the small edition. Uh, a little bit cheaper too, but without some of the halo options like the HDR display. So depending on how you feel about this, this is either awesome because it got thinner looking, sleeker, all that sort of thing, a little bit lighter, or it's going to be not so awesome sauce to you because the boxy design is gone, yes, but so is the bridge battery system where it had an internal front battery sealed inside and a larger removable battery to really increase endurance. They got rid of the hard drive bay. Those of you who want lots of cheap big capacity storage might be sad about that. There are some other things we'll talk about too that have changed inside. So it's become more modern, but in some ways it's become less ThinkPad X. We'll talk about it now. So we have the X280 on top of the X1 Carbon latest generation, and you can see how similar they look, right? It's pretty impressive stuff there. The DNA has obviously changed a whole lot, really. It's like, honey, who sh shrunk the X1 Carbon? So if you always liked the X1 Carbon, but you wanted the smaller footprint, you wanted a little bit lower price tag, well, this is your happy moment right now. At 2.87 pounds, which is 1.3 kilograms and 17.8 millimeters, it's pretty thin and light. There are laptops out there that are going to be even thinner and even lighter, but the X200 series typically has not gone to be the apex of it. That's what the carbon is for, and they want to keep the X280 a little bit more affordable. It's several millimeters thinner than its predecessor. Like I said, gone is the boxy design. So now it's pretty much your standard Ultrabook, okay? You've got your U-Series Ultrabooks 15 watt KB Lake R 8th generation CPU, Core i5, Core i7, including vPro supported. You've got RAM soldered on board. There is no RAM slot. There's a single M.2 SSD bay. There is no hard drive bay anymore. And Ethernet is supported via that funky little dongle adapter that Lenovo offers, uh, sold separately, for several of their laptops. So the, the Ethernet uh, chip is actually built into the laptop. It's just that the interface isn't there. You need the little dongle adapter so you can plug in your RJ45. There are a couple of good things though. You got Thunderbolt 3 here that also does USB-C Gen 1 and Gen 2 both. It's a single port and the charger plugs into it. So that means if you want to charge and use a peripheral, you want to look at using a dock or one of those multifunction adapters that has several different ports and supports pass-through charging on it. There's no more bridge battery system, like I said. So it uh, used to be in the front, there was a small nominally sealed inside battery, which means you had to unscrew and take it apart to get to that battery, and a removable battery at the rear. And you can get in a couple of different sizes. And that's what made the X2 series and also the T series really pretty cool because you could have really long battery life. You could swap in batteries in the field, which has become increasingly rare among Ultrabooks. That's gone. Now we just have a single battery that is sealed inside, which means you have to unscrew the bottom cover if you want to get to it to service it, but there's no swappable battery. That battery is a 48 watt hour six cell battery, which is, is an okay capacity. It's not, wow, super duper huge. Like some actually push up to 60 watt hour, but it's not super small either. And battery life, even though Lenovo claims up to 15 hours, I mean, you'd have to set the brightness to 5% and be doing almost nothing with it, which is how most laptop manufacturers roll when they make these claims. In real life, for light productivity use and streaming video, we're talking about eight and a half to 10 hours of battery life. So it's still pretty decent. It's not gonna be as versatile as something with a removable battery, but that's, that is livable. It starts at around $1,180 in the United States, and that gets you a Core i5, 8 gigs of DDR4, 2400 megahertz RAM, so it's fast RAM, that's standard. Again, soldered on board, and 128 gigs SATA 3 interface M.2 SSD. You can get it with PCIe NVMe SSDs. You can upgrade, you know how it is with Lenovo. You can either buy a couple of different pre-built configurations or built to order. So yes, it does support that. In fact, we have the very fast new Samsung PM981 SSD in ours with really fantastic speeds. Our Core i5 with eight gigs of RAM and that 512 gig PCIe NVMe SSD and a full HD display is around 1560 bucks. So this isn't cheap, but it is a lot more affordable than something like the X1 Carbon. 
If you want to max it out, you can hit $2,280 at current prices on Lenovo's site. That gives you a Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, which is the max that they'll ship it with, and a one terabyte SSD and the full HD display. So when we're talking about the displays, you still have two options here. There's always that, oh my God, the IT department hated me and they had to save money for HD display, not full HD. That's, you know, 1366 by 768 resolution. It's a TN panel. It's not going to be super duper lovely. It is matte anti-glare, just like our full HD display. It doesn't support touch. And then there's the upgrade, not too expensive, to our IPS display. Full HD, 1920 by 1080. Again, it has an anti-glare or matte finish on it, which is really nice and pretty rare with a touchscreen. And this does have a touchscreen. I would recommend that unless, you know, your IT department is bulk buying and they're just trying to save some money. It's a pretty nice display. You know, it used to be Lenovo's business laptop displays were... But this one for, you know, one that's not considered a super duper expensive upgrade or anything like that has some pretty good metrics. You can see it on screen and it's certainly very bright and you're not going to worry about glare and the, the, the color gamut on it is quite good. Obviously a big woohoo selling point for a tech enthusiast is the fact that it has a Thunderbolt 3 port and that is four lane. So that's good news there. The bad news, like I said, is you got to have to share it with charging duties, but hey, that's not too bad. You've got two USB type A ports. You've got HDMI 1.4, of course, a headphone jack, and now a micro SD card slot instead of a full size. LTE 4G is optional, though I haven't seen any configurations on Lenovo's website that actually offer it. There is a half height M.2 bay for that, and the antennas are already in place, and there is a nano SIM card slot for that. But like I said, I haven't seen a way to actually buy that. Maybe you can buy the Lenovo card and drop it in yourself if you need that feature. Intel 8265 AC, the usual standard Wi-Fi going on, the usual backlit keyboard, the usual excellent Lenovo keyboard with pleasing key travel, excellent damping smile shaped keys. It's just a wonderful keyboard if you'd like to type. Uh, the footprint might be a little small. It's a 12 and a half inch laptop though, so there's not as much room to spread it out across, you know, side to side, but I find it eminently usable. As usual, you got the nav point pointer on board as well for those of you who like that little red eraser stick pointer and the usual Lenovo trackpad with their customizable settings there. It's a perfectly serviceable trackpad and about decent size considering the, the small footprint of the laptop overall. A fingerprint reader is a lot optional on this. It will cost you a whopping $11. There is a Windows Hello IR camera option. There's also the new Lenovo Think Shutter option for the 720p webcam. You can't get that and the Windows Hello camera because, well, duh, they don't want you to slide shut the shutter and then suddenly Windows Hello doesn't work because you've just covered up the camera fella, you know. Sometimes ThinkPads have great speakers, sometimes they don't. This has Dolby Audio and Stereo speakers, and it's surprisingly relatively loud and full. It sounds better than the X1 Carbon and the X1 Yoga. Go figure. So, in terms of volume, in terms of fullness, it's nice. It's pleasing. And happily, the fan won't be drowning out the audio either. I, if you really push this hard, of course, you will hear the fan. That's it's impossible not to. Uh, but it's not loud. It's not annoying. It's pretty quiet. Most of the time, you won't hear it. You know, there are some thing pads and some yogas even that uh, the fan seems to come on and off inexplicably. This one does not. It's pretty much, it makes sense. It's not on audibly unless you push it to do something and then you'll hear it's up. Surface temperatures have actually gone down despite the fact that we have twice the performance and twice the cores in here, four core Intel KB Lake R CPUs. We have the Core i5, so the benchmarks that you see on screen are for the Core i5 model with a fast SSD inside. Uh, the, the thing to note here is that they're doing something that Dell did with the XPS 139370. They're doing TDP up. Up means that they give it some extra voltage so it can perform, well, faster. So this one limits on CPUs is how much voltage they have available, how much power. The other th constraint is thermal. And they've done a very good job here. You can see in our PC Mark 8 benchmark graph where it actually maps the clock speed. You can see it is pegged at turbo boost. So we don't usually see in ultra books. We see a lot of spiking up and down because it has to drop out of full speed. You go back up, drop down, go back up. And the, the core temperatures actually were pretty good at the highest point. They were around 82 centigrade out of, it was 100 is maximum allowable. So just like we saw the X1 Carbon, they're getting some really good performance out of these ultra books. I mean, there's still ultra books. There's still 15 watt use CPUs. They're not ThinkPad. P-series workstations with 45 watt quad cores, but it's good stuff. So take off the bottom cover, well, it just about couldn't be easier. There are Phillips head screws, hardly any of them. You can see that they're visible here. Then you just pry off from here, it pops off. There's no overly aggressive clips. And voila, there is our battery right there, should you ever need to service it down the road. The stereo speakers, which are actually a pretty ample size. No wonder they sound pretty decent. We have our M2 SSD right here. We have our 
Wi-Fi card right here, and this is the bay where the LTE card would go if it actually had one, if it became available. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad X280. Again, like I said at the beginning, it really depends on what you were looking from, from the X series. If you just wanted a smaller, more portable version of the X1 Carbon, a little bit cheaper, you didn't need the fancy, fancy things like the HDR display option, then you're probably thrilled about this. But if you're one of those people who actually liked having a RAM slot or removable or upgradable hard drive for large capacity storage, a built-in Ethernet jack instead of a required dongle and that bridge battery system, then you're probably going, <laughs> so that's up to you as to which kind of buyer you are. Really, it is one of the most durable and compact, take it anywhere kind of laptop still. And there's some good things that have happened, like the display has gotten better, the CPUs are twice as fast as they were before. It's, you know, that Intel 8th generation thing going on there, fast PCIe, NVMe, SSD options. There's still a lot to like here, depending on what you need. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.